With the goal of living past 100, it's important to know what centenarians die from so that we can minimize that risk. So what's the number one cause of death in centenarians? Let's have a look at some data. So uh, that's what we can see here. Uh, uh, death for all, for all causes for people old people older than 100 years old. And this is a sample size of about 30, 36,000 centenarians. So uh, first, the uh, major cause of death in centenarians was old age. Uh, about 28% of all deaths in, in the group that was older than 100 years died from what they what was classified as old age, which can be literally anything. So what about cause specific mortality like heart disease and cancer? This would be the obvious choice. So we can see that uh, for heart disease, 8.6% of all people who died that were older than 100 uh, died from heart disease and uh, about four out of 100 uh, died from cancer. So these aren't the primary causes of death in people older than 100 years. What is? So we can see that 18, about 18% 18 of the deaths for centenarians was related to pneumonia. So if we're gonna live past 100 years, we need to account for uh, pneumonia and optimize strategies to reduce risk of pneumonia at older ages. So is this a, a, an effect specific to centenarians or is this uh, also occurring at uh, relatively younger ages? So in this case, I've rectangled starting at 80 years old all the way up to 100 years old. And what we can see is that uh, pneumonia, the, uh, the incidence of deaths for pneumonia increases during aging. So for the 80 year old group, uh, uh, pneumonia, uh, the percentage of deaths from pneumonia are only about 6% of all deaths, and then they increase in each five-year increment all the way up to 100 years. So 6% to 8.3%, 11.5% to 14%, 14.6%, and then finally the centenarians at that about 18% of all deaths related to pneumonia. So uh, interestingly, also during that time from 80 to 100 plus, uh, there's a reduction in both uh, deaths from heart disease and cancer. So we can see uh, deaths from heart disease go from 19% down to that 9% around 9% in centenarians. And similarly for cancer, uh, deaths decreased from about 24.5% in the 80 year olds to 4.4% in the centenarians. So it looks like centenarians escape death from heart disease and cancer, but then die at an increased rate from pneumonia. So what is pneumonia? So just as a brief overview, it's simply an infection of the uh, lung or lungs, which leads to inflammation, difficulty breathing, and then all the complications that come with that. Now, in this study, the uh, pneumonia was designated uh, with the ICD-10 codes uh, J12 through J118, which includes both viral and bacterial pneumonia. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about uh, strategies to optimize against viral uh, pneumonia, in this case uh, caused by influenza, the influenza A virus, and bacterial pneumonia, in this case, uh, Klebsiella pneumoniae uh, uh, bacteria. So what interventions... Uh, can we use to improve survival following viral or bacterial lung infection? So first, as we can see by the title, there's improved survival following viral lung infection in mice on a high soluble fiber diet. So what's, what's, what does that even mean? What's a high soluble fiber diet? So dietary fiber is comprised of insoluble fiber, which is not fermented by gut bacteria, and soluble fiber, which is fermented by gut bacteria to form the short chain fatty acids, acetate, propionate, and butyrate. So why are they called short chain fatty acids? So acetate is a two carbon fatty acid, CH3COOH, propionate a three carbon fatty acid, and butyrate a four carbon fatty acid. So relative to other fatty acids in terms of carbon chain length, they are short. So, okay, so improved survival uh, after uh, consumption of a high soluble fiber diet after influenza A lung infection. So that's what we're looking at here. And this data is in young female mice. For whatever reason, they didn't uh, look at uh, survival in male mice. They only use female mice. So we're looking at survival plotted against time after infection uh, and comparing uh, control fit animals versus a high fiber diet. So in this case, the controls consumed 30% uh, of their diet from cellulose, which is a poorly fermentable fiber. It's not fermented by gut bacteria and 30% uh, inulin, which is a soluble fiber, which is fermented by gut bacteria to produce the short chain fatty acids. So what happened for both these groups? So when looking at uh, average survival, that's the uh, time when half the cohort is alive and half has died. So 50% survival is indicative of that. And we can see that for the animals on the control diet, 50% uh, survival, average survival was at about nine days. So uh, in contrast, mice that were on the high soluble fiber diet lived significantly longer, 14 days, um, which suggests an important role for soluble fiber on uh, improving defense against viral lung infection. 
So when considering that soluble fiber is fermented by gut bacteria to make short-chain fatty acids, is the improved survival mediated by these short-chain fatty acids? So first we have to see if the short-chain fatty acids were actually elevated as a result of the high soluble fiber diet. So that's what we're looking at here, fecal, uh, so levels of uh, uh, these short-chain fatty acids in uh, stool samples on the left, and then plasma levels of the short-chain fatty acids on the right. So the, the gut bacteria are located in the colon or large intestine, and then they would be uh, absorbed into the in intestinal epithelial cells, where they then can pass into the blood. That's how they would get into the plasma. So first, on the left, notice that in, in the fecal samples, short chain, the short-chain fatty acids acetate was twofold higher in the inulin uh, soluble fiber-fed mice compared to controls, but then butyrate, notice the increase of about 150-fold relative to the control-fed animals. So a similar trend is found for the plasma short-chain fatty acids. So again, acetate in plasma was about two-fold elevated uh, as a result of the high soluble fiber diet. Propionate was now significantly increased in, in plasma, but then again, butyrate was increased almost 150-fold compared to the uh, control diet. Uh, and again, this is in the influenza A uh, uh, infected mice. So when considering that butyrate was uh, tremendously increased on the high soluble fiber diet and, uh, and the high soluble fiber uh, fi uh, fed mice had an increased survival after a viral lung infection, this led the authors of this study to ask, can individual short chain fatty, fatty acids impact survival following infection with influenza? And to do that, they looked at butyrate. So what we're looking at here is survival after, again, influenza A infection, lung infection with uh, the influenza virus, and again, in young female mice, and we're looking at survival. So in one group, the mice were just given water, and in the other group, they were given butyrate in the water. So they were drinking water that, was, that had butyrate in it. And when we look at average survival, we can see that for the mice that only had water, average survival after influenza viral lung infection was about eight days. So in, co in contrast, average survival for butyrate-treated mice was double, uh, you know, 17 or more than double, 17 days after being infected with influenza A. So that suggests that high-soluble high fiber diet increased in the gut bacterial production of the short-chain fatty, acid, uh, fatty acids, sorry, which can then improve our, uh, our ability to survive after a viral lung infection. So what about survival after a bacterial lung infection? Uh, and as I mentioned, I'm going to show data for uh, Klebsiella uh, pneumoniae, and that's what we can see here. So survival after a bacterial infection with uh, Klebsiella uh, bacteria. And first, when looking at the uh, vehicle-treated mice, so uh, mice that were not treated with any of the short-chain fatty acids, we can see that average survival after bacterial lung infection was at about 80 hours. So what about the butyrate-treated mice? And that's the uh, green line, and we can see that all of the butyrate-treated mice were still alive after 80 hours after infection with Klebsiella bacteria, which strongly suggests a protective role for these short-chain fatty acids in uh, the lung, you know, the lung's defense against uh, infection. So, uh, is there a link? But now these data are in mice. Is there a link between fiber intake with pneumonia in people? So, a relatively higher fiber diet is associated with a reduced risk of uh, death from respiratory diseases. Now, it's important to note that death from respiratory diseases, which I've uh, rectangled here, uh, the ICD codes include, included J10 through J18, and also J40 to J47, which includes viral and bacterial pneumonia, but also res other respiratory diseases too, like uh, COPD. So this, these data from death from respiratory diseases isn't specific to pneumonia, but uh, from all respiratory-related uh, respiratory deaths. So was there a protective role for fiber or association for a protective role for fiber in these studies. So first, in looking at the data for men and looking at the fully adjusted model, we can see that men that consumed uh, the highest amount of fiber in the study, 29 grams, had a 31%, a significantly reduced risk of death from respiratory diseases of 31% when compared with men that compared, uh, uh, consumed the lowest amount of fiber, 12.6%, uh, 12.6 grams, sorry. So, uh, and actually, uh, starting from quintile four of fiber intake, so somewhere above uh, uh, 19 grams per day, was associated with a 26% reduced risk of death from respiratory diseases when compared with the lower fiber group. So a similar effect is present for women, only in this case, women that consumed above the 12.6 grams, uh, sorry, 10.8 grams, so that was considered low fiber uh, in quintile one. So quintile two for fiber consumption, slightly higher than quintile one, uh, had a 19% reduced risk of death from respiratory diseases, and then every quintile above that had a further reduction in risk of death from respiratory diseases. So quintile three, 27% down, 
quintile four, 42% down, quintile five, 46% down. So the highest fiber group of 25 grams, uh, about, about 25 grams per day versus about 11 grams per day in women, significantly reduced risk of death from respiratory diseases. Now, based on all the data that I've shown you, this suggests that a high fiber diet and more specifically soluble fiber may be an important approach for reducing risk of death from respiratory diseases, including pneumonia. Now, it's also important to note that there are no RCTs, randomized controlled trials, that have directly tested this hypothesis in older adults. So uh, the data is yet to be seen if this will actually be uh, proven in, in studies of older adults that have pneumonia. All right, uh, that's all I've got for now. If you made it to the end, thanks for, uh, for watching and listening, and have a great day.